welcome to the latest Bison video blog. Sans Craig Bowl, I guess it's just you and I. One hit uh, wonder. He couldn't stand the pressure <laughs> of being with superstars I, like us. I guess. He does have other things to, to do this time of year, and we'll talk about that in a second. We are full-blown into the spring season, and uh, for the first time, at least in my tenure here, Jeff, the Bison baseball and softball teams able to play home games in, in March and early April, which is unheard of, and the baseball team off to its best start in Division One history. I know we touched on this about a month ago after they beat Arizona, but now a, a sweep of Minnesota and now a sweep of UND as they get set for conference play starting next weekend. Todd Brown's bunch is on a roll. And projected to be in the 64 yeah. team field. I have the, late, the, the first bracketology is out and has NDSU in as the Summit League champ. Ahead of Oral Roberts, 14-time defending champ Oral Roberts. If I'm head coach Todd Brown, I don't know if I want that out there like that. <laughs> it's not like Oral Roberts um, is, is short of some motivation, but uh, you get, you throw this at them, and yep. also in that 14 in a row, and, and that's a threat to their manhood. Now, here's a question I'll ask for you, because in the Summit League tournament, it's double elimination. What you've seen out of this Bison baseball team, is it inconceivable that they could match up with Oral Roberts and beat them in the Summit League championship game if, we, if they get that far? I think if you beat Arizona, and I think if you sweep Minnesota on the road, I think you have a ch obviously a chance to beat Oral Roberts. It's going to come down to how the pitching holds no up, and the arms have been really good. But, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a series like that, when it's a do or die, it's going to come down to your ace and, and uh, you know, keep the ball down. And, and, and the hitting's there, too, for NDSU. So they match up in that respect. Good thing or bad thing, the series with ORU is at the end of the season. It's the end of the last regular season series, and then it's the Summit League tournament. Advantage, disadvantage, as you look, I mean, we're talking the end of May already here, but that's... That's how the schedule shapes up for the Bison. I think it's neutral just because of the, simply the, the sport of baseball can be so wacky. You mentioned that no NDSU swept UND. That could have been three out of four for UND because the Bison bats weren't exactly explosive over the weekend. NDSU with Valley City State, then a road series at Nebraska-Omaha, future Summit League uh, foe, who already beat Creighton, who's a pretty good baseball program, uh, did the Mavericks and the Bison Open uh, Summit League conference play on the road at Western Illinois, a team that was picked ahead of them uh, in the Summit League preseason poll. Western Illinois softball team will come to town this weekend, and they'll have to go up against Krista Menke, the freshman from Friend, Nebraska, who won her fourth straight uh, Summit League Pitcher of the Week. She's been absolutely fantastic and now gives NDSU a one-two punch at, on the mound they have not had in their D1 transition. What a recruiting uh, job they did on this girl. Yeah. She's a, from a small town, Friend, Nebraska, which... 1,100 people. Bigger than Oswego? It is bigger. Or no, it's smaller, smaller than Oswego. Smaller than Oswego. <laughs> uh, 1,100 people and played in Class C wow. in Nebraska. Yeah. The, the, uh, the coaches just went and watched her play and liked a lot of things. And what I like about her, I saw her last weekend, she's got that attitude at the mound, that uh, you know, that confidence, that kind of quiet swagger that uh, this is my game and, and you're not going to take it from me. NDSU has, of course, won three straight Summit League uh, titles in a row to go to the NCAA tournament from what you saw. Granted, it's a small sample size of their first three home games. They have the, the moxie to do this again to make another run and, and head back to the NCAAs? I think they're getting it back. I think uh, last year maybe was a little dip and for Darren's program. That's going from here to here <laughs> rather than most. But I, I think there's a uh, quiet confidence about this team. Western Illinois, as I said, coming to town this weekend. Also this weekend will be the first scrimmage for the Bison football team. They've been in pads now for about a week. We get to finally see some hitting going on. Obviously, there's not going to be much hitting of Brock Jensen, but after that is where at least I'll be most focused on backup quarterback between Esley Thornton and Carson Wentz. A couple of Bismarck guys fighting to be number two. So far, from what I've seen during uh, fall or spring practice here, it's been even. I'd say Esley probably has the advantage just because of the extra year he's had with the program. Well, that'll be a big focus, I think, the rest of the spring. But they'll be going against a defense, and I put the numbers to this as I look through the roster. 17 defenders, defensive players, who played a regular rotation of some sort. And that includes Brendan Pierre, who two years ago yeah. was a starter, will return. That's 17 defensive players who return. And that does not include Jordan Champion and Zach Colvin, who both of who redshirted last year. Colvin was injured. So you have 19 players. <laughs> I was already, I mentioned this on Saturday. The linebacker and the secondary, especially the secondary, has the chance to be the best uh, position group on the field. When you look at it, you just mentioned the return of Brendan Pierre. You have an All-American in Marcus Williams. You have Colton Hegel, uh, who's already been a two-year starter. And Christian Dudzik, who was a freshman all-conference all pick at corner, now moving to safety. 
Holy cow. Secondary's loaded. Hard to overlook the defensive line, though, with Chuckum. Very true. With uh, Levon Perry and Ryan Drevel coming in the middle. You have Cole, Emmanuel and, and Cole, Cole Jerk, I think, yep. uh, really came on last year and asserted himself. And I think he'll be one of the leaders of this team. And most of those guys are either sophomores or juniors or will be ne uh, next fall. On the flip side, question marks that we talked about with Craig Bull. He mentioned wide receiver. That's something we'll look at. You and I talked about it. I can't remember how many times how great the wide receivers looked during spring and then had the case of the drops, the dropsies during the spring game. It's been the same way so far in spring. I'm curious to see how that develops. And also, offensive line replacing two, uh, three, or four year starters in Austin Richard and Paul Cornick. That's something I want to see develop over here, especially starting on Saturday. Maybe we should get offensive line coach Scott Fuchs yes. in the hot seat here and grill him. <laughs> I know he's been anxious with the, with the boys through the first uh, few practices as well. One of my favorite topics besides schedules is also conference expansion because it continues something you and I talked about a couple weeks ago when we heard that Butler looks like, and it's pretty much a done deal, that they're going to leave for the Atlantic 10. The Colonial now is facing the defections possibly of Virginia Commonwealth and George Mason. This is the first time next to Butler that I've noticed these moves strictly for basketball because everything we've seen before, when we starting with Nebraska way back when, when they left the Big 12 to go to the Big 10, have been football operate. Now I mention this because Youngstown State, is the furthest out there of the of the Missouri Valley schools. They play in the horizon in basketball. Is there the possibility, if the horizon wants to say, all we want is basketball schools, to say, okay, well, Youngstown, you're not that far away from, say, a Delaware, a James Madison, uh, um, a Maine, and a, North and a Northeastern up in that part of the world, to go to the Colonial, and maybe the Missouri Valley goes back to nine, which they seem to have liked, and then everybody plays the rotation of the round robin. I would call that likely of Youngstown looking on the East Coast for travel reasons more than anything. And if I were the Summit League commissioner, yeah. I would be a little nervous. And that's, the, that's, you know, the constant dilemma, something you and I have talked about as well. If the possibility of Oakland leaves the Summit League to go to the horizon, boy, the, the, obviously the league opens wide open for South go. Dakota State, yep. NDSU, and Western Illinois, but... The league certainly drops down in terms of appeal, doesn't it? And there's also a school in Grand Forks who has to travel a long ways in the big sky. You so, love stirring that pot, don't well, let's, you? Let's just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. That's the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog. Jeff and I will be out at the Fargo Dome Saturday for a complete recap of the first scrimmage for NDSU football.